ready, like I said, we're moving into module 10. We're doing 10 1 and 10 2, and we're going to examine the last. Today, we'll understand that how to describe the properties of dilations. You'll be able to identify reductions and enlargements. The same thing, they're still dilations, but there's two different types. There's a reduction. What does reduction mean? Why are you looking back there? Oh. Uh, make it something smaller. What's an enlargement mean? Make it bigger. something bigger. So there's two different types of dilations. One of them will make the figure smaller. One of them will make the figure larger. This is the only transformation where the size of the figure will change. Everywhere else in reflections, rotations, and translations, the size never changed. Now, once again, will the shape itself actually change? No. We may start off with a square that is, I don't know, has an area of 16 inches. When we're done, the square could have an area of 8 inches or 32 inches. It will still be a square. The actual shape itself won't change. If it gets smaller, it could get larger, but the shape itself will never change. You won't go from a square to a rhombus to a trapezoid to a circle to a triangle to a frowny face. You will, however, get larger and smaller. Now, what exactly is a dilation? Like I said, unlike the other transformations that we've studied, this is where you grab your pencil and start writing in the blue. Unlike the other transformations that we study, translations, rotations, reflections, dilations, as I said, change the size, but not the shape of a figure. Additionally, the orientation, when we're talking about dilations, the orientation of a figure does not change. So if you have a triangle, that is, I guess for all intents and purposes, pointing upward, something like this. You have a triangle, can we see that? Yeah. If you have a triangle that for all intents and purposes, this was an arrow pointing upwards. If we do a dilation, it's always gonna be pointing upwards. It could be larger, it could be smaller, but the orientation will never change. And it will never, ever, ever, like I said, magically turn into a circle, because that would make you sad and me sad, because that means you have no idea what you're doing. All right, every dilation also has a fixed point called the center of dilation, and it's located where the lines connecting corresponding ports of the figures intersect. For this grade level, our COD, center of dilation, is going to be standardized at the origin. That's where everything is getting larger or smaller from. As you progress through geometry, your dilations can take on different COVs. Once again, just like doing rotations about the origins, when we dilate, we're going to use the origin as our starting point. So, like I said, two different types. A dilation can produce a larger figure. That's going to be a enlargement, if you remember that from a second ago. Or a smaller figure, that's also known as a reduction, enlargement or reduction. Right in. So we have two different dilations here. Can anybody tell me, looking at the figure on the left, I'll let you write that in, then I want you to look at the figure on the left, the two images on the left. See what you remember. I know a weekend, a day off, and all that stuff. How many of you came yesterday? A whole bunch of you I've seen, okay. Looking here on the left, let's talk colors. Which one of them is the pre-image, blue or pink? Miss Pena, looking up here on the left, which one is the image, which one is the pre-image, and how can you tell? Image is the pink one, okay. Class, is that correct, yes or no? Yes. No. 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 That's no. not correct. Let's examine it closer. Remember, the pre-image, what does pre mean? Before. Before, before right? Before we transform, before we dilate it. So, the pink one is your pre-image, and the blue one is your image. image. And there's an easy way to tell. Pick any point. Let's uh, pick a point, A, B, C, or D. Which one do you want to pick? C. 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 You see C and you see the other C? What's different about those two, what's different about those two letters? The little prime. 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 What does the prime indicate? The prime's always going to be part of your what? Image, image. or pre-image? Image. Image. So it should be real, real easy to identify <coughs> where you started. This is my pre-image. This is my image. Looking at that now, now that we know that the pink is the pre and the blue is the image, did this figure get larger or smaller? Larger. It got larger. We started with the pink, the pre-image. We ended up with the blue, the image. So this figure expanded, it got larger. Let's see if we can take that and slide it over to the other figure here. Which one of these, color-wise, is the image? Which one is the pre-image? Let's go to Colby. Which one's the pre-image? Which color? 
The pink is the pre, which means that the blue has to be the image. So did this figure get larger or smaller? Smaller. smaller. There we go. And now it's like, okay, what do you mean, white man? It's smaller. A little notations there. And the way to identify this is you can always look at the scale factor, which is what we're going to move into in a second. Scale factors tell us whether or not the figure got larger or smaller. A scale factor describes just how much the image has been enlarged or reduced. We use the letter K to represent a scale factor algebraically. So when we're doing coordinate notation for dilations, you'll see the letter K pop up. Now an enlargement will always have a scale factor that is greater than one, and a reduction will always have a scale factor that is less than one. So if we look here at the enlargement, notice that the scale factor is greater than one. The scale factor is two. If we look at the reduction, that scale factor, is that scale factor greater than one or less than one? Less than one, it's one quarter. What if we had a scale factor, Andre, what if we had a scale factor of one? What would that be, an enlargement or a reduction? There we go, smart man, it would be the exact same thing. If you see a scale factor of one, nothing changes. If it's less than one, it got smaller. If it gets bigger than one, it got bigger. So keep that in mind, and we're gonna move back into scale factors in a second, but I wanna see if we can actually identify, looking at images and pre-image, what was the dilation. So any questions on this right now? Any questions? No? All right. So. All right, finding a scale factor. Now we're going to move into actually finding the scale factor because that's the most important part of a dilation. Once you know the scale factor, you can work with any type of dilation in the book. To find the scale factor of a dilation, we can find the ratios of corresponding side lengths. I'll let you write that in, then I'll explain what those are. <coughs> Now, corresponding side lengths are kind of like uh, corresponding points. Looking up here, we'll get the corresponding side lengths in a second. Looking up here, who can give me a pair of corresponding points? Let's see if you remember what those are. Uh, Mr. Benitez, give me a pair of corresponding points. A and A prime. A and A prime. Mr. Benton, give me another pair of corresponding points. C and C prime. C and C prime. And give me the last pair. B and B prime. B and B prime. A and A prime. B and B prime. C and C prime. Those are corresponding points. What we want is corresponding sides. So they're similar. The only difference is now we're actually looking at a side of the figure. When we're trying to find corresponding sides, it makes sense for us to work with any side that is either vertical or horizontal. Does anybody know why? Anybody have an idea? What happened? It's easier, but what makes it easier? What makes working with this side or this side of this triangle easier than working with the hypotenuse? Anybody have an idea? What happened? Well, it's easier, but what makes it easier? Well, the coordinates we can get to if we don't have any horizontal or vertical sides. So something that makes it easier. What makes it easier? When it goes to A to B, it's slanted. It's, it's slanted. So do we know? Let me ask you a, a question here. Do we know exactly how long this is? Yes or no? No. We'd have to use the Pythagorean theorem to find that. No, we haven't taught you. We haven't taught that to you yet. So you don't know that yet, technically, most of you. Um, these, however, I can measure this side very easily. How long is this side? Four units. Four units. How long is this side? Five One, units. two, three, four, five, six units. In case you want to know how to measure these, you go from dot to dot. Do not just sit here and count the blocks. Well, that's only half the block. No. Go like this. One, two, three, four, five, six units. One, two, three, four, five, six units. Make sure that you're counting each block that that line runs through, and also make sure that you check the graph. This graph is going up by what? Two. 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 No, it's going up by one, two, three, four, five, six. So going up by ones. If this was going up by twos, then that wouldn't be six inches long. It would be how many inches long? Twelve. Twelve. I'm just giving a generic unit there. So you have to be careful when you measure these things. Let's clear that out. Now, corresponding sides. If A and A prime were corresponding points, can somebody give me a corresponding side then? Not the one that's listed in the notes. Mr. Benton? Well, not, on the not the one that's listed in the notes. There's other corresponding sides. There's two other sides. Yes, Ben, give me another side. AC and A prime and C prime? Yeah, well, AC and AC prime. You can just say it like that. So AC and AC prime are corresponding sides. The notes has CB and CB prime listed. There's one more set of corresponding sides. Ms. Payne, what's the last set? Um,
perfect, AB and AB prime. And because we don't know the Pythagorean theorem yet, which side would we not use? AB and AB prime. You could use, doesn't matter which one, you can either use AC and AC prime or CB and CB prime. For this demo, we're gonna use CB and CB prime, which is the horizontal side of each of these triangles. And to find the scale factor, here's what you do. You measure the length of each side. How long did we say this side was? Six. Six. How long do you think this side is? Three. Three. And you simply turn that into a fraction. The numerator, and there's a reason why the image and the pre-image are so important. The numerator will always be the length of the side of your image, whichever figure we end up with. So my image here, the length is how long again? Six. six. So it's going to be six over how long was the length of the pre-image? Three. Three. And as long as you can do simple division, you just found your scale factor. So what's my scale factor? Two. 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 So my scale factor is two. Since my scale factor is two, not looking at the graph, but just knowing that the scale factor is two, was this an enlargement or a reduction? Enlargement. Why? Because, because, it's greater than one. because the scale factor is greater than one. If your scale factor is greater than one, you don't even need to look at the graph to realize that it is an enlargement. You simply know that if that's greater than one, it is definitely going to be an enlargement. Now, if the ratios of all the sides, I'm gonna tuck this in here, this is important. If you were to take the ratio of all the sides, not that we could right now because we don't know the Pythagorean theorem to say you have a square. If the ratios of all the sides lengths are not equal, then it is not a dilation. That's important. We're going to come back to that later. I just want to tuck that in here now. If the ratios of all the side lengths are not equal, it is not a dilation. For it to be a true dilation, all the side lengths should have the same ratio. What does that mean? Well, let's look at AC and AC prime. How long was AC? Four. How long is, so that's AC prime, how long is AC? Two. two. What's four divided by two? two? Two. Should have the same ratio. And if we were to use the Pythagorean theorem here to find the length of this, that would give me 1636 square root of 52. This would be the square root of 52, and this would be 4, 9, this would be the square root of 13. If you were to divide the square root of 52 and the square root of 13, what do you think you would get? Two. two. You'd get two, exactly two. Yes, you would. You can look it up on your calculator if you want to check. What dilation. Now, looking here, curveball. Do I have a horizontal or a vertical side here? No. no, I don't. All my sides here are diagonal. I have a diagonal side, a diagonal side, a diagonal side. So I cannot easily determine how long this is, how long this is, or how long this is. When I presented with this type of problem, there is still an easy way for me to go in and find the scale factor. And I have to use the ratios of corresponding vertices, which is the same thing as corresponding points. Those are the same thing. And you might want to write in points there, in parentheses, underneath vertices, in case you forget what that is when you're doing your test. Because remember, you can bring your notes, but you want to know what these uh, vocab words mean. So corresponding vertices. Give me the corresponding vertices here. Valeria, give me a set of corresponding vertices. Same thing as corresponding points. There's three sets here. Give me one. No, we're not looking at corresponding vertices. The points, we're looking at points, that indicates the letters. So pick a letter, any letter. A. A. So what's the corresponding point to A? Okay. First, lose the attitude. Second, because we just did this about two, three minutes ago. What point corresponds to A? This is my pre-image. In the image, what point corresponds to A here? How many points do you have in the image? Three. Three. What are the letters? A prime, B prime, C prime. Which point do you think corresponds to A? Because it's not the first time you've seen it. We've actually done it four lessons in a row now. So what point do you think corresponds to A? Andre, you'll lose your desk next time you put your head down. A prime. There we go. That's a corresponding set. What other? What are the other corresponding points here? Let's go to test it. Give me another set. C and what? C and C prime. Okay. And then Jazz, the last one. B and B prime. You only need to choose one set to work with. For this demo, we're going to choose to work with B and B. 
prime. And what we have to do is we have to go in and we have to find the coordinate pairs for each of those points. So can somebody give me the coordinate pair for B? Um, all right, let's just go to the cards here since I got a whole bunch of sleepy people here. We probably stayed up way too late last night. Let's see here. Mr. Benson, give me the coordinates for B. For B? For B, yep. Two comma one. Two comma one, okay, so for B, B, we have two comma one, and then for B prime, Sophia Rodriguez, what's B prime? Um, four comma six. Let's see, B prime is one, two, three, four, uh, one, two, three, four, and the X, yes, but check the Y. What would the Y be? Four comma two. Four comma two, there you go. Good job. Four comma two. So we have B, we have B prime, and then here's what you do. You simply take those coordinates, and you turn them into a ratio. Once again, the coordinates from your image will be your what, numerator or denominator? Numerator, just like here, the measure of the side length of your image was your numerator. Here, the points from your image will be your numerator. This is an error here, I don't know why that says B double prime, that's just supposed to be B prime. Oh. So we wanna get the X value for B prime. What's the X value for B prime, guys? Four, four. No, just the x value. Four. 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 And what's the x value for b? Two. Two. Four divided by two gives me? Two. 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 And then what's the y value for b prime? Two. 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 And what's the y value for b? One. one two. two divided by one also gives me two. So that means, what's the scale factor here? Two. 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 So scale factor is two. Was this an enlargement or a reduction? Enlargement. How do we know? It's greater than one. greater than one. 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 What if the scale factor was one? What would that be? Uh, same same figure. Same. What if the scale factor was three over two? What would that be? Still being a large. Uh, what if it was one over two? Oh, that would be a reduction. Okay. Let's try a couple of these. And then oh, let's try one on your own. Seven. We want to find the scale factor here. So let's just make sure that we're all on the same track. Looking here, use the colors to tell me. Which one of these figures represents my pre-image? The blue or the green? The blue is my pre-image, which means that the green is my image. And how can you tell that? What were you looking at? Prime. Prime notation. Prime notation, that's my image. Which means that this, when I find the corresponding side lanes, this is going to be my numerator and the side length here will be my denominator. So we're gonna pick a side length. Um, let's go to Colby. Colby, pick a set of corresponding sides. What do you wanna work with? Corresponding sides. So it could be something like D, E, G, F, G, F, and G, F prime. So we need to measure the length of G, F. Maria Paul Reyes, what's the length of GF? Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, that's good. And then what is the length of, Jaheim, what is the length of GF prime? Three. Three, one, two, three, okay. So we have the lengths of both of our corresponding sides. Now we need to set up a ratio. So we're gonna make our fraction, and it's gonna be three over six. six. We're gonna simplify that. We're not simplifying it to a decimal, we're just simplifying the fraction. So court, what would that be when we simplify? One over two. So my scale factor, my K, is equal to one over two. Since that is my scale factor, Courtney, thank you. Since that is my scale factor, going on is, Reduction or enlargement, what is that? Reduction. It's reduction, why? Because K is less than one, so that's a reduction. Good job. Kavina, next one, I want you to pick, well, let's start off slow. Tell me, what color is the image? Green. Green, how can you tell? That, that is the image. So prime. Because of the prime notation, A prime, B prime, C prime, D prime, okay. Now that we know that, I want you to pick a set of corresponding signs. What do you want to work with? AC and AC prime. So AC 
and AC prime. We need to go and we need to find the measure of each of those. So Mr. Aguayo, can you give me the measure of AC and AC prime? How long is AC? Two. Two. Okay, that's good. How long is AC prime? Perfect. Okay. Now that we know that, Mr. Aguayo, what's my numerator going to be? Y6. Perfect. See? See? You know what I'm saying? You got that. You got that. Oh, Joe. All right. So, six is going to be my numerator, which means my denominator has to be what, Benitez? Your numerator. I mean, um, your numerator has to be six. I'm sorry. I know. That's why I wrote six. Yeah. So, what's my denominator? Yeah. Your denominator is two. My denominator is two. And when we simplify that, Gabby, I hope you can do the math here. I know this might be a little beyond you. Six divided by two. Oh, my God. So hard. So hard. Okay. What is it? Um, um, it's six to the second power. Six squared. That's thirty-six. Three. Three. Good. It's three. So the scale factor is three. My scale factor is three. So Sean Conception. Ooh, got the point. Is that a reduction or an enlargement? Why is it an enlargement? Because k, my scale factor, is greater than one. Make sure you circle enlargement and make sure you write k. Equals three in a large. Okay. So in no, both of those examples, we had graphs. Taking away the graph and just giving you the length of the sides, can we still find out whether or not we have a dilation or whether or not we have a scale factor? Yes or no? Yes, we can. In this instance, you would have to go in and take the ratio of all of the sides. Since we don't have the figure here to look at, it's impossible to tell if we have a square and a square or a square and a trapezoid sequence. What we're supposed to do is we're supposed to take the lengths of each of these sides and turn them into fractions. So we have two quadrilaterals, MNPQ and MNPQ prime. Vicente, what length? is going to be the numerator here. I need to know the length of m prime. What's going to be my numerator? And they're in order, guys, when you go through the numbers. m and p cubed, m and p cubed. So what's m prime? So here we have m and p cubed prime. So the numbers are in the same order, right? First number is m, then n, then p, and then q. So what's the length of n? Five, and your denominator would be 15. And we can simplify that down to what, guys? Uh, Not three. Don't worry, because that is a common mistake. You'd be surprised how many times I saw that on a test last year. People turn this into three. It's that whole, you're reversing in your head, okay? Five and 15, 15 divided by five is three, but we're not doing 15 divided by five. We're doing five divided by 15, so it's a fraction. What's the reciprocal of three? One over three. Can I stop there? No. no, because I don't have the exact figure, I have to check the length of each side. Oh, Johnny boy, what is the length of n prime? Eight. Eight. So we have eight, and what's your denominator going to be? Um, 24. 24, and that simplifies down to what? Three. One over three. Okay, good. Um, Ms. Bentley, what about P prime? Um, seven. Seven, and what is P? 21. Seven over 21. Back check, baby. 21. Seven over 21. That simplifies down to what, Ms. Bentley? One over three. One over three. So, so far, I have a constant ratio. It looks like I might have a good dilation here, but we have to keep going. We've got to check all of them. So, I'm going to go to Miggy, Q prime and Q. What do you got? Numerator. Give me numerator first. 18. I need Four. Q prime. Quattro. 4 over 18. 18. And then Kavina, what does that simplify down to? 2 over 9. 2 over 9. So then the question here is, is this a true dilation? Yes or no? No. No, because we do not have a constant ratio. Therefore, my scale factor does not exist. This is simply two different shapes that have not been dilated correctly. Now, dilation, the ratios of the side lanes are not equal. That's how you check to see it as a dilation. This problem right here, written in this form, 
with different numbers will be on your exam. So maybe put a little star next to it so you know where to go back and look for this problem. It will be just like this. It can have three, four, five sides. It will be just like this, and you need to check all of them. It may or may not be a dilation depending on your test form. Any questions? Questions? Questions on this? No? So let you write that in. We've got a whiteboard. Here, for scale factor k, the coordinate notation of the dilation looks like this. This is our coordinate notation. You're going to want to write that in. You're going to want to put a box around it so you can come back and find that on your exam easily because that coordinate notation is going to be responsible for quite a few. Valeria, are you writing that in? Please pick up your pen or pencil and write it in. It's easy to spot so you want to write it in. It's x comma y, arrow, parentheses, kx comma ky. This indicates that there's multiplication happening between the scale factor and the x coordinate, oh. scale factor and the y coordinate. So k times x comma k times y. Whatever the scale factor is, that's where we're multiplying each of the coordinates by. This problem wants us to graph the image of triangle ABC after a dilation, always with the origin as its center, and a scale factor of 3. So lots of information there. All I really need is this. My scale factor is 3. You want me to do a dilation. My scale factor is 3. Is this figure going to get bigger or smaller? Bigger. bigger, because the scale factor is greater than, greater than, one. than 1. What you need to do, this one's easy because I pulled all the coordinates out for you. Usually on these problems, you have to go in and find each of the coordinate pairs. That's why you have to be careful, because if you pull out one coordinate pair incorrectly, what's going to happen to the whole problem? It's all wrong. It's all wrong. Everything's wrong. So the simple, this task, can become the most difficult if you're not sure how to pull those points out. Here's the coordinate notation. Because my scale factor is, maybe put a box around that too. Because my scale factor is 3, Andre, eyes up here. Because my scale factor is 3, that means I'm multiplying both the x and y coordinate of a, b, and c times 3. And here's what it looks like. I have coordinate A, it's 1 comma 1, and that's going to look just like this, 3 times 1, because my scale factor is 3, comma, 3 times 1, because my scale factor is 3, and that's going to give me my new coordinate pair, which is what? 3 comma 3. 3 comma 3, I mean, I hope we can all multiply 3 times 1 and 3 times 1. Hooray! Having done that as an example, let's go to this Pena. I want to get, oh, and by the way, this is A prime. I want to get B prime. Tell me, what am I doing? By the scale factor, which is 3. Okay, so we do parentheses. Tell me, what am I going to write? 3 times 3, comma, 3 times 1. And that's going to give me coordinates for B prime, which are 9, comma, 3. B, E, A. Beautiful. B prime. Thank you very much. Tessia! We want to find C prime. So tell me, what am I doing? Okay, 3 times 1, <coughs> comma, 3 times 3. Always put the scale factor before the coordinate pair. Helps you keep track of what you're multiplying by what. So we do 3 times 1, 3 times 3, so my coordinate pair is going to be what? 3, 9. Perfect. So C prime is 3, 9. The question is, am I done? No. No, why am I not done? Because you have to be right. Because it said, specifically, be careful on your exam, make sure you read the whole question. It's asking you to graph the image. So I need to go and graph A, B, C prime. That's as simple as graphing each of these vertices. I'll go and I'll do it for you. Make sure you follow along in your paper. So I'll do 3, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. That, and make sure on your exam you write in what the point is. You can't just leave it like that. What point is this? That's A prime. Thank and then we're going to go over to B prime, so that's 9, comma, 3, 9, comma, 1, 2, 3. And that's going to be my B prime. And then lastly, C prime, 1, 2, 3, comma, 9, which is up here. That is C prime. And we'll go in and we'll connect all of these vertices with our lines. Now, if you do this and you have a different shape, did you do something wrong? Yes. 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 Because the shape does not change, only the size. 
It's the exact same triangle, it's just a larger version. Or it could be a smaller version. In this case, it's an enlargement, so it gets larger. If your triangle changes from a right triangle, which is what this is, to an isosceles or scaling magically, you've done something wrong. You've got to figure out what you did. Questions on this one? No, Okay. Let's then go in. And the very last part here is to write the rule. In order to write the rule, all you have to do is find the scale factor. Do we already know how to find the scale factor here, yes or no? Yes. yes, and then once you find the scale factor, you simply write it in this form. Kx, k being your scale factor, comma, ky. So we need the actual scale factor first, which means we can do it one of two ways, corresponding sides or corresponding vertices. I have two, I have a vertical and a horizontal side, so I can use corresponding sides if I want to. I can also use what Jazz used on her whiteboard, which is corresponding vertices, whatever way works for you. Sophia, uh, what do you want to use? Corresponding vertices or corresponding sides? Corresponding. corresponding sides. Okay, so she wants to use corresponding sides. What sides do you want to use? I picked some here, but just in case, I would like to see if people want to go a different way. You use those? Okay. So we want to use AB and AB prime. So you need to measure. You need to find the length of AB prime and AB. How long is AB prime? Um, two. two. So this is two. How long is AB? Six. So we want to go in and we want to find K. So what's your numerator going to be? Um, if, you're, if you're thinking, then that means you're going in the wrong direction because the numerator is on the board in front of you. Remember, the numerator is the length of the side of the image. So what was the length of the side of the image here? Um, two. two, there you go. And then that means my denominator has to be, what is it class? Six. 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 So I would have to go in and simplify that. If you leave it unsimplified, it's wrong. So when I simplify it, um, Andre, when I simplify it, what's my scale factor? Scale factor K is equal to 1 over 3, so I need the rule now. Now that I have my scale factor, I go to write the rule, it's going to look like that. Christian, what does my rule do? Um, it's going to look like that, where K represents your oh, scale factor. Right. Um, <coughs> one Y. Why are you doing one Y? What's my oh, scale factor? My bad, my bad, my bad. What's the scale factor? One concrete. No, what's the scale factor? One over three. One over three, one third. So what's your rule going to be? Start over. Oh, so, whisper. What's my scale factor? One, one third. One third. Looking at the coordinate notation, we replace. When you write the rule, all you're doing is replacing k in that notation with your scale factor. So, what should your rule be for this? Oh. So one, one over three, why? <laughs> no. Okay, pause. Wait, 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 it kind of looks like uh, it does. Yeah. Uh, okay, don't all right, I'll use the better method out there. Thank you, Gabby, for playing yeah. devil's advocate. When she's your lawyer, maybe many years from now, not the way she goes, hire her because she'll argue for your defense. All right, so try it again. Go ahead, tell me. Miss Young. What's the, what's the rule, dude? You're on the right track, it's one third, that's correct. And then just what letter comes after K there, man? You're overthinking this. What letter comes after K? X. X. Oh. That's it. And then, that's it, you're overthinking it. Then, I do the same thing for Y, so what's the K? One third. One third. Y. That's it, that's it. There you go. One third x comma one third y. All you have to do when you write the rule is simply replace k in that coordinate notation with your scale factor. Hey, I give out a lot of tickets to people in reserve. In sixth period, I throw them in the air, let them fight each other on the ground. For real? Oh yeah, it's fun. Usually, I, I don't know if you guys know Brandon Young. 
Oh. You know, Brandon, ask him what happens when I throw the tickets in the air. It's always right next to him. I just take them, throw them in the air, and he gets jumped on for tickets. It's fun to watch. All right, any questions on this? It's fun for me, because I just throw them and walk away. And it'd be amazing how people kill each other. Oh, little teeny tiny pieces of paper. Yes, I mean, you can buy that store. I lost mine. Questions, questions? They all want to kill us. Do the honor and see all right, oh. let's try one. Shh. Uh, let's try two more problems. We're going to write two more rules. No, no, we're going to dilate and find one more rule. Five, please. A triangle has vertices of A, B, C, and here's my scale factor, 3x, 3y. I'm showing you the problems just in the different ways they can be presented. So what am I supposed to do here, Colby? What do I do with that scale factor and those coordinates? Um, yeah, I would take each of these coordinate pairs, and I'd multiply it by my scale factor, which is three. So we have A prime, B prime, C prime. What am I doing to A prime, Colby? What am I multiplying each of those coordinate pairs by? By three. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do three times negative five, comma, three times negative four. We've already done this, but I'm just showing you the different ways, the different looks you can get when you see these problems. We do our multiplication, and what is the image of A prime going to be? After you do the multiplication. <coughs> okay, good. So negative 15, comma. Uh, negative 12. Negative 12, good job. Okay, well, we just keep on going in and dilating each of these coordinate pairs. Um, seven, B prime. What am I doing to those coordinate pairs? Okay, so three, multiplying it by two, comma, three, multiplying it by six, good job, and close, and that's going to give me what is the coordinate of B prime? Three times two is? Six. Three times six is eighteen. Good. That's B prime. We need one last one. We need C prime. So let's go to uh, Mr. Aguayo. There is Mr. Aguayo. C prime. Tell me what am I doing? Okay. Okay. Three times what? Four. Four. Comma. Three times. Okay. So what's the coordinate for C prime? 12. 12 comma? Perfect. 12 comma negative nine. That's it. That's how you can translate it. That's how you can, sorry, transform it um, just given the coordinate pairs and no graph. It's the exact same process. You're just multiplying each of the coordinates by the scale factor. One final example, we want to write a rule for this dilation. Looking at this dilation, Mr. Benton, there's two different ways you could do this, but only one of them is really going to work here, right? Could you easily find the lengths of the corresponding sides here, yes or no? No. Why? Because they're diagonal. So diagonal. So this is where you'd have to use corresponding vertices or corresponding points. So we have a couple different corresponding points here, but you want to make sure that you use points that you can identify. So if you were to use, just keep your eyes up here for a second, guys. If you guys were to use this point, if you look at your image, is that point easily defined in your image, yes or no? No, it looks like it's 0.5 comma 1, but that's still a yes. So try to find two sets of corresponding vertices that are on lattice points, such as this one and this one. What are the coordinate pairs for that point in the image, Mr. Benton? This well, point right here. So that one is negative 4. I mean, 4 comma negative 4. So 4 comma negative 4. And what are the point, what are they, what's the coordinate pair for that point in the image itself? 1 comma negative 1. 1 comma negative 1. All right, we need to find the scale factor. So x and y, and then we're going to have our prime point. We'll just call it, give me a letter, we'll call it a x prime, 
and x. Uh, that would be confusing. B prime. Or no, we'll call it B prime. We'll say it's point B over B. So what? <laughs> Write that in. What would be your B prime coordinate then, Mr. Benton? See if you can put all these together um, for x. One. One. And that would be over what? One. Perfect. And that simplifies down to one fourth. And then y, check to make sure. Negative one. Over. Negative four. Negative four. And that simplifies down to what, guys? Two negatives. When we divide, make a positive. positive. So we end up with one over four. Now that we have our scale factor, we just need to write the rule. Christian, what's the rule? Okay. Oh, God. One over four. X. Okay. And one over four y. Perfect. Just make sure you put them in parentheses. One fourth x, comma one fourth y. That's your rule. Good. Job. Good. 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 Any questions on this at all? It's still just simple multiplication. As long as you're able to do that, you're fine. Um, I'm not giving you guys any homework tonight. Tomorrow, we'll just do it in groups in class. So that way you can go home and not have to worry about that stuff. I would try to focus maybe on that study island if only a couple of you did it. So, possible thanks to us, you know, part of our board.